Stephen, I think your case demonstrates so well something that I say a lot, which is that law and justice are not the same thing. And they call the Amazon rainforest the lungs of the world. So it's much bigger than just your clients who are living there. But can you speak a little bit towards actually or about what you were fighting for? What your clients were experiencing there, the indigenous communities and what the impact on the environment was? What were the wrongs that Chevron was committing? Okay, that's a great question. I mean, in a nutshell, Chevron, when they went into the Ecuadorian Amazon in the late 1960s, they designed a system of oil extraction to pollute. This was not an accident. They designed to just dump systematically over the years that they operated there billions of gallons of cancer causing waste into rivers and streams that local communities use for their drinking water. I mean, they basically went in and in a few short years poisoned the water supply that thousands of people were relying on for their sustenance. I'm talking about people who relied on the natural world for their sustenance. There's no so stores, there's no money, there's no water bottles, there's no faucets. You know, they used the natural world to, to live, to eat, to drink water, to bathe, to fish, to hunt, to build their homes, to get their medicines. And all of that was destroyed in a few short years because of the pure greed of a company. And I'll say that when they decided to do this, they it was clearly foreseeable people over time would die from exposures to the toxins they were dumping. Now, that's what happened in Ecuador and that's what we're fighting all these years to get cleaned up. So lives can be saved, many already have died. But I'll say that this is not unusual. I think the magnitude of this is, is unusual. But I think what happened has happened in a lot of different countries in Peru, Nigeria, you know, so many places, even in the United States in certain places, there's so many places around the world that have been polluted by the fossil fuel industry. And the fossil fuel industry is fundamentally, in my opinion, a grifting industry. They get government subsidies, they go in, they exploit and pull oil or minerals out of the ground, gas. They sell it, they make the profits, leave behind the pollution, and they expect the vulnerable communities, like in this case, the indigenous people of Ecuador, to just pay the cost of their pollution. You know, or the taxpayers of Ecuador. You know, they basically cut and run out of Ecuador. And this entire case is about holding them accountable and making them make the people whole. So this doesn't happen again and again and again. And by the way, our case, even though we haven't actually recovered the money yet, it has caused so much, so many problems for Chevron in terms of reputational costs, the amount of legal fees. They've used 60 law firms, 2,000 lawyers. They have felt pain. And there has been a measure of accountability already, even though they haven't actually paid the judgment. So, you know, we are achieving something, um, at least to this point. We won the case, and we expect to force them to pay every dollar of this judgment over time. I certainly hope so. Yeah, I mean, you, you point out some of the areas that they do so much of this environmental damage in. And I think for a lot of people who don't live in those areas, it's easy to not even know that it's happening. Um, as you point out, in the same way that the New York Times didn't make the trip to your house, they don't mm -hmm. often make the trip down to Ecuador to cover the damage that's being done. But that does not mean that they're not being damaged by it, both by the destruction of the natural environment, as Jessica pointed out, it is the lungs of the earth, there's consequences for that. But also the natural outcome of using what these companies drill kills many hundreds of thousands of people around the globe literally every year. And so you can yeah. be entirely ignorant of the damage and you can still suffer terrible respiratory infections, cancers and all of that. Um, so all the more important for the media to pay attention to this. Uh, what, what I wanted to ask you about, and uh, we, we only have a little bit more time. Um, and this is maybe testament to what you said about the media not doing good coverage of this case. I found very mixed information about legally where it's expected this is going to go, where the next steps are. Can you tell us a little bit about the appeals process, what the next steps are, what's gonna happen in the near future. So the, yeah, so there's really two things to think about. We have a final judgment out of Ecuador and we're allowed to enforce it against Chevron's assets wherever they are exist in the world other than the United States. So countries like Canada, Australia, other places around the world, they're very vulnerable. And there's a legal team working to enforce the judgment. It's a normal kind of legal process. It's a shame we have to go, the indigenous people have to go through that. They already won the case. I, Chevron should comply with the judgment. But it's a very viable case. And that's sort of one piece of the strategy. The other is personal to me. It's like, what happens to me now? The fact is, I still live in danger. 
Chevron and the judge who's after me, Lewis Kaplan, could still file another criminal contempt case against me and have it prosecuted privately. The US Supreme Court rejected my appeal, even though two justices said they totally agree that this was an unconstitutional case. That is the criminal contempt case that led to my detention. So I'm living in this sort of danger. However, I am free. They took my passport, I can't leave the country. And they took my law license and I can't work. And I'm fighting to get those things back and to get those rights back and to restore my full freedom. One of the things I'm doing is going to international courts, including the United Nations, to get an opinion against the US government for violating my legal rights and violating my human rights. And you know, US courts just seem don't don't seem terribly interested in doing anything against Chevron. Okay. I'm going outside the US where I think I can get a more fair hearing to go after the US government for letting its judiciary violate international law to lock me up illegally. I did nothing other than fight for the rights of my clients. So I'm fighting, they're fighting, it's connected, it's a little bit different. You know, Just because I'm not in great shape doesn't mean they can't recover all the money and vice versa. So there's two things happening, they're connected, they're somewhat separate and they're both moving forward and I'm really excited about it. Awesome. Um, if people watching want to follow along and know these these two different tracks, where can they follow the developments? Yeah. So I have a website. It's called freedonziger.com, which is what we set up when I was detained. But I'm still not fully free, so we kept the the name Free Donziger. Um, and on that site, you can get a lot more information. There's actions we ask people to do. There, I'm about to actually ask President Biden for a pardon formally, because. I should be pardoned, this was such an outrage. And we're gonna ask people to sign petitions and that kind of thing. So go to freedonziger.com. We also have a defense fund. We This costs money to fight this important battle. If people wanna help in that way, they're obviously welcome. We appreciate any donation, no matter how small. But more importantly, come to the website, sign up. You'll get our regular letters and you know you can be part of this campaign. Over 100,000 people, by the way, around the world have joined our campaign. It's, it's you know, we're building something that I think not only can protect the people of Ecuador, but also sort of protect other people as we move forward and take on some other similar issues. Awesome, Stephen, uh, obviously, you know, I and I, I can speak for our audience, I think, cuz I'm seeing their comments. Uh, appreciate all that you've accomplished and continue to try to do. Also appreciate you taking time out to join us on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you and thanks for what you do, appreciate it. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.